linemen and running backs. All right, let's go to Miami and talk about some quarterbacks where all eyes are on third-year quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. His first year under Mike McDaniel. Now, this is interesting. McDaniel went on Sirius XM NFL Radio and talked about the perception and expectations for his 24-year-old signal caller. Take a listen. He didn't choose to be picked sixth in the first round. He was picked sixth, but that is a burden with pressure. And he is playing the quarterback position with intent, purpose, a deliberate nature, with conviction. And I couldn't be happier with where he's at. You're watching a guy become a professional right in front of your eyes. Okay, now first of all, Tua was picked fifth. You know who was picked sixth? Justin Herbert. No. So, no. I don't know, Coach. No. Are you thinking about you wish you had him? I, James, what do you think about these comments, though, about Tua? Look, nobody gets to pick where they get drafted, but if you do get picked fifth overall, there's going to be a lot of pressure on you. And right now he hasn't shown enough promise, but, you know, you got an offensive mind, a head coach now. you got Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, a good stable of running backs, Mike Isecki. I think it's put up or shut up time for Tua. You know, you get picked with overall, we got to see something now. Yeah, he knows the expectations that are out there. So given those expectations, what does he need to do, Jeff, to keep his job? Uh, I mean, I, I limit limit uh, turnovers, make sure he's in command of this offense. Here's the best part. McDaniel, although he screwed up his draft, let me tell you what doesn't screw up. Run game. Mm. This, this guy was the run game coordinator in San Francisco for a number of years, then became the offensive coordinator. His... Tua's going to depend on this run game because once it gets going, it opens up everything on the back end for play action, movement of the pocket. All of that becomes – you see Jimmy G has, has played extremely well in this system. Tua can as well, irrespective of where he's drafted. Who cares? At this point, he has to get better. He has to be more accurate. He has to be more command of the offense. I think Mike McDaniel is going to do a good job of getting him a lot further along in the process where he can do those things. I want to show people this because you look at the Dolphins' schedule, right? Their first four games. Take a look at this because this is not easy. Ooh. Patriots at Ravens, Bills, Bengals. James, how do they go in their first four with two at the helm? I can see them going one and three. And, uh, oh. Like I said, that could be a, a rough start. Can he keep start his for them job to... in that situation? I think so. I think they'll yeah. stick stick with him throughout the entire season. I know everybody says they have Teddy Bridgewater, who is a solid quarterback as well, but I think he has the you know vote of confidence from the coaching staff and his teammates. So he just got to go out there and do it, man. Wow. I think that's interesting because if they start one and three, Diana, you have to wonder if Bridgewater gets off the bench and steps in because this is a team not just with playoff aspirations, but they want to go a lot further than that. James, I know you're new to this TV thing, but in our business, we say you, you just lead with the headline. And the headline here is just That goes away if the Dolphins start winning. And Jeff talked about what this offense is going to look like. And I don't know if I can emphasize it enough on the show how much the Miami offense is going to look like the San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. It is almost identical. So what you saw there is exactly what you're going to see in Miami. And from everything that we're hearing, and we've heard a lot this summer about Tua, about how he's connecting with Tyreek Hill and, and, right. and his past catchers and Jalen Waddle, obviously. Um, all of that is good. It's just, can they put it together? I know you want to jump Sne in. Yeah, yeah. S sneaky addition here. Taron Armstead, the left tackle from the Saints, who now is with the, 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 the – we talk about players yeah. being drivers in the locker room. He is a driver for this offensive line. Ah. The productivity from this offensive line, I think, will go up significantly because of guys like that. Again, they've revamped it. I'm not saying it's not the same, but the pieces they have added, that is, that is very calming for a quarterback, especially who wants to take shots down the field with speedy receivers, knowing your left side is locked down, and that's the type of tackle Armstead is is a big deal for a QB. That's a great point. Now, Diana, I understand that you've got some developing news in Miami. What's happening down there? Yeah, so there's joint practices down in Miami between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dolphins, and the Dolphins canceled practice today because last night some sort of stomach bug is going around. I spoke to a source a few minutes ago before we came back from commercial and said they're not ruling out food poisoning. That's, that's something that's going on. So a lot of the guys – Throwing up and you can do the, the rest of the math of probably what's going down there. The Eagles, though, they're all right. The Eagles are going to practice. The Dolphins are just going to work virtually today just to, you know, take some precautions here so this doesn't continue to spread. 
Oh, man, I won't make light of it, but I'll tell you what, I hope those guys get better soon because that's kind of a, that doesn't sound yeah. pleasant. All right, now speaking of the Dolphins. Food poison. Dolphins, course. yeah, exactly. The Dolphins had a joint practice with the Eagles, and that was yesterday. Look at Tyree Kill on Darius that's, Slay. It's unfair. Yeah. It's Look unfair. at this. I just what for, do you make of that? Just for all the just for all the fans, this drill is set up for <laughs> offense. They should win this the majority of times. Oh. But how you go? Like, don't do them dirty like that. Like, put that clip out there. It's a good route, but it, that is that is tough sledding. I know you are earning your pay for slay. Like, there's I, no I, doubt. I, we show this video under protest from the anchor. Yes, yes. <laughs> you are embarrassing, yes. Mr. Slay. James, what do you make? He's doing this yeah, every corner in the NFL. That's, so, that's right. That's, that's, right. that's right. He's doing it on every corner. <laughs> Ain't no doubt. Ah. All right. Competitive. And Diana, the Eagles will win the NFC East. Fact or fiction? Uh, James, you little commander homer today. Uh, it is a fact that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to win the division. Have you guys taken a look at this roster? Howie Roseman did some work this offseason, giving his quarterback, Jalen Hurts, Pretty much everything he possibly needs. And in this division, guys, in football, we know the lines, they can help you win games. And the Eagles have the best line up front on offense and defense. Love to hear it. I am from Philadelphia, though. <laughs> but, <laughs> do we agree with Diana, though, Jeff? That the Eagles will win the division? I don't. Listen, here, here's, here's my concern here. We usually give the Cowboys way too much love in the preseason and offseason. I think we're, get, we're taking a little bit away from them. Let's not forget, like, they, they beat the Cowboys. Dak Prescott has beaten the Eagles five out of six times. They've averaged almost 32 points a game. Mm. That's a pretty good record against your, your, you know, your, your opponent in your division. So, I'm still going to go with the Cowboys here until the Eagles clear. Now, Diana's point is well taken. Their line, offense and defensive line are, are better than the Cowboys. I I still trust Dak Prescott and what they're going to do uh, offensively to put points on the board. And when Philly has to score in a track meet, can they do it? That's going to be interesting for yeah, me. Yeah, and that's going to be key. And, and I look at Jalen Hurts and all of this. I, I Do you think that if Jalen Hurts – his up, his down this season. Is he the determining factor? Hundred percent. It's not even close. And what Jalen Hurts does is yeah. going to depend. That's going to be the success or failure of this football team. Can he, with AJ Brown, with Smith, with all the weapons you're talking about, with a great offensive line and an incredible rushing attack? Can he command this thing and take that offense to the next level? You're going to get into games where you're going to have to put up a significant amount of points. Do you trust him to beat you from the pocket, continue to make those throws? That's going to be Jalen Hurts. That's going to be the team. Success or failure rest on his shoulders. James Way, what do you think? Who wins this division? I think it's the Cowboys, strictly based off Dak Prescott. He's the most mm -hmm. consistent quarterback in that division. I think their defense, second year with Dan Quinn at the helm. I think they created a lot of turnovers last year. So. I'm going to roll with the Cowboys. Okay. You know, I think it's yeah, interesting. See, this is, my, ahead, this is my issue with that, James. <laughs> James, I love what you're saying about the turnovers, right? But when you're reliant on your success on defensive right. turnovers two years in a row, that, that, that doesn't give me a lot of confidence. You're going to have to do more on offense because you can't depend on that. Yes, they're well coached, and yes, they took a major step last year. But for them to do that again, the, the chances are really slim, you know? Yeah, I don't disagree with you. And, and for that reason, I would say the Eagles had the best chance to win this division. Homer. Now, look, look, look. Homer. I, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. And that's a good point. I got to tell you something. Here's the thing with me on the Eagles. I would have said no, but I think on paper they have the best team. This is my question with this team. On paper, the lines are the best. On paper, the running back, running game strong, receiver strong. Everything looks good. Can they put it all together and win this division? I don't know, but I think they're the best of the lot. I don't think you can trust Carson Wentz in Washington, and let's not even talk about the Giants. So then it comes down to the Eagles and the Cowboys, and I think with the Tyron Smith issue, their line issues, they're not their receiver issues. I think we have the fewest issues of all the teams in that division. But let's take it a step further, James. We. Yeah, hey. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. <laughs> Let's take it a step further. <laughs> James, here's the other part of this. Some people are looking at the Eagles and saying this is a Super Bowl contender. So I want to go back to Jalen Hurts. Is he the determining factor between them being Super Bowl quality or not? 100%. Um, I think in those knowing passing situations, he's going to have to stand in the pocket and make those throws. You know, in the past few years, he hasn't been able to do that. He's a 25th ranked passer from the pocket. His QBR sits between Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold, which isn't, which isn't great. If they want to be a Super Bowl contender, he's going to have to stand in there and make those throws. I know they had the best rushing you know, team in the league last year, which is a big help, but mm -hmm. 
to be a Super Bowl contender. You're going to have to stand in there and make those throws on you know, third and short, third and long in the red zone.